Welcome back everyone, hope you're all well. Today I've got a plant haul for you and some care tips. I was at the Garden Society pop-up shop in Southampton last week as I was presenting the terrarium workshop there with Samuel Baker. And whilst I was there, I picked up some amazing plants. The first plant I picked up is the Serapegia woodii variegata, or some people pronounce it Serapegia also known as the variegated string of hearts. I've wanted one of these for ages, but you don't really see them often in the garden centers. So I had to grab it. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna climb up on my bench in a minute and show you the top part, because it's really bushy and full. The leaves on this one are huge, really plump, much bigger than my other string of hearts. So these guys are really easy to care for if you can give them the bright and direct light that they require. And also being variegated, they're going to need a bit more light than the regular version, just because the white parts of the plant can't photosynthesize. So it's only the green bits that are working hard to keep the plant alive. So they do need very bright indirect light. To be honest, where I've got it now, it's not going to get enough light once it kind of goes into autumn, winter time. So I think I'm gonna move it right by the window, either my kitchen window or my office window. In regards to watering, I tend to water my string of hearts once these leaves that should be plump and firm start to turn kind of thin and slightly wrinkly. So that'll indicate that the plant needs watering. But at the moment, this one's really nice and plump, so it definitely doesn't need any water. But what I'd do is I would take the whole pot down and just give it a good soak and let it kind of drain out and then just hang it back up. These guys need well-draining soil. They don't like to sit in soggy soil and they will be drying out in between waterings. You don't have to water them that often. As I say, just keep an eye on the leaves and that'll indicate when it needs watering. I fertilise my string of hearts once a month during the growing season just with my usual baby bio fertiliser which is the same stuff that I use for all my house plants. I'm really excited to see how long this will grow. My other one is pretty long now, I keep trimming it, it just keeps growing back. I'm assuming the variegated one's going to be a little bit more fussy so we'll see and I'll keep you updated on its progress. Next up, we've got this breathtakingly beautiful Talansia diariana. It really reminds me of a heliconia. This guy is native to Ecuador and you can grow it as an air plant or it can be grown in soil. This plant does flower. You can see one of the tiny white flowers there coming out from one of the bracts. They're quite insignificant compared to the amazing bright orange bracts that the plant produces. It's really beautiful. But once this plant finishes flowering, it will die back and produce pups that you can propagate. It's looking pretty happy here in my bio bear. This particular Talantia likes bright indirect light and high humidity. And in regards to watering, what I do with my terrarium is I just fill up the water tank every couple of weeks and that keeps the soil slightly moist and this also raises the humidity inside. So I won't really have to do a lot with it to be honest. If it was outside of the terrarium, 
I would have to give it a good watering once a week or if you're growing it as an air plant you could just miss the roots now and again. How much water you give it depends on your home environment as with any plant. And the final plant that I picked up, something a little bit different, I'm not going to pronounce it because I haven't got a clue how to pronounce it, I'll put it on the screen, but it's also known as Baby's Tears, Angel Tears, Mind Your Own Business, Mother of Thousands, the list goes on. It's that carpet moss looking plant I've got dotted around the bio bear. It looks really cool. If it gets a bit too invasive, I'll just propagate the plant and you can do this by just dividing it at the roots basically, just kind of tearing it apart. I'll see how it goes if it gets a bit wild. This plant prefers bright indirect light and if it does get enough light, it can produce tiny flowers. I'm pretty sure it's going to be loving it in here with the high humidity and the bright light. I'll attach some footage of the Garden Society pop-up shop in Southampton that I took last week whilst I was there. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed my mini plant haul and that you find the care tips useful. As always, if you've got any questions, please ask and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Take care everybody!